Hi. So in the last two weeks, two important things have happened for Steinberg users. One is that Cubase 13 was released, and two is that UAD released a new version of their powered plugins. Now, there are lots of videos on the release of Cubase 13 already, of course. So let's have a look at number two and why it is so particularly important for Steinberg users. Let's go. Okay, so UAD recently released version 11 of their Powered Plugins bundle. And one of the main things that this new version offers is VST3 support for almost all of their Powered Plugins. And with Powered Plugins, I mean those plugins that run on the UAD hardware, so on their accelerator cards or audio interfaces like the Apollo, and not the ones that run natively as part of their Spark program, because they were already VST3, of course. Now you may wonder why is this so important, the VST3 version of UAD plugins? And well, that's because Steinberg is of course planning to retire the VST2 standard from their software. So in the very near future, you can expect that you will not be able to run VST2 plugins anymore on Steinberg software. And in fact, if you're running Cubase on an M1 Mac natively, then already this is the case. I was actually surprised that Cubase 13 still offered the ability to run VST2 plugins on all the other platforms. But maybe the fact that UAD hadn't gone VST3 yet had something to do with it. But if you want to know more about VST2 versus VST3 and what that means for you as a Steinberg user, then I'll link a separate video on this subject at the end of this one. Now, if you follow all of this, then you probably know that a lot of the plugin companies have already switched over to offering VST3 versions of all of their plugins. Most actually do not offer the old VST2 plugins anymore. But UAD was still lacking in that. They did offer VST3 for their Spark plugins that run natively, but not for the plugins that run on the accelerator cards or on their audio interfaces. So it's great news that they now do because to us, Steinberg users, which also have UAD hardware, can finally run the UAD plugins on the hardware again without worrying about future project compatibility because we can now just use the VST3 versions on the hardware. Now, before we have a look at this new UAD version and how you can see the difference between the VST2 and VST3 plugins in your Steinberg software and how it's handled if you have VST2 plugins in your old projects, if you like this video or find it useful, please give it a big thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, subscribe to the channel, and you can ring the little bell icon so that you get notified when I publish another video. If you really enjoy my videos, you can always support me through the virtual tip jar, which is the super thanks button below the video or buy anything via the affiliate links in the description to these stores, I will then get a small commission without any extra cost to you. But let's have a look at what UAD version 11 looks like in Cubase, so that you can make sense of all these VST2 versus VST3 shenanigans. Let's have a look. Now if we first take a look at my UAD control panel, you can see that I have two pieces of UAD hardware in there, a UAD Solo and a UAD Quad. I started with Solo many years ago, and that was actually a UAD 1 Solo, which I later upgraded to the 2, and a UAD Quad for four times more processing power. And as you can see, I'm running version 11.0.0, which is the just released version. Now in this Cubase project, which is a project from a different video, I have a couple of audio tracks, but let's go to the mixer view. And I have an empty audio track, Audio 01 over here. And if you look at the plugin overview over here, you can have a nice overview of what's available now in UAD land. Because if you set the filter here to the default and you sort by vendor, then if you scroll down, you get to universal audio and you basically see three entries for universal audio. Now the first one is the entry which contains all the new VST3 plugins. Yeah, as you can see over here by those three stripes on the right side, these are all VST3 plugins. And this is basically for almost all of their plugins, which were previously only available in VST2 format. And if you insert one of their plugins, for example, let's take a pull tag. Over here on the right side, you can see that this is a plugin running on the UAD2. And you can see that there's a new plugin system over here, by which you can also recognize the new VST3 plugins that can run on the UAD hardware. But if we get rid of this and we go back to the list, you can see that the next entry is Universal Audio UADX, and these are basically the Spark plugins. So these plugins are also VST3, but they do not require any UAD hardware. They just run natively on the processor. 
And the reason why you only see a few over here is one, a lot of their plugins are not yet available as Spark plugins. And the plugins that are shown here are actually the plugins which I have licenses for. And I didn't have to buy the licenses for those Spark plugins separately because I basically got these because of the fact that I also own these plugins for running on the UAD hardware. Then you automatically get the Spark plugins and vice versa. Assuming of course that they're available on the other platform as well. Now the next category of plugins that you can see over here is the Universal Audio Inc. And these are the legacy plugins from Universal Audio that are only available in VST2 format. For example, there is the UAD Antares Auto-Tune real-time plugin, which is not available in VST3 format, and I suspect that it will not be made available in VST3 format either, but you can still run it as a VST2 plugin as long as Steinberg keeps supporting VST2, of course. And then there's a whole list of UAD mono plugins. These are basically all of their plugins, which they previously also had a mono version of. And these are also only still available in VST2 format. And I again suspect that they will not be migrated to VST3 format. Because nowadays it doesn't really matter anymore whether you put a mono plugin or a stereo plugin on your track. It's just one plugin which will work for mono and stereo channels. Now if you start up an old project in Cubase which had UAD VST2 plugins in there, they are automatically replaced by their VST3 counterpart. Let's have a look at one of those projects. Now this is a project of the Yuwa song The Calling and I have a whole series of videos on how we produced this particular song. So if you're interested in that, I will put a link to that playlist in the description. But if you look at my UAD hardware monitor, you can see that there are a lot of UAD plugins in there. For example, here on the mix bus, I have the UAD Ampex ATR102. And as you can see over here from the fact that there is now a different preset system, this is now a VST3 plugin. Whereas at the time that I was mixing this project, it was definitely not VST3 because it didn't exist yet. Another example here is for the UAD EMT140 plugin. Also, now the plugin in the VST3 format and no longer the VST2 plugin. Now, I do also have some of those mono plugins in here. For example, here, the UAD Pultec EQP1A Legacy in the mono variant. And as you can see, it does not have that new UAD2 indicator here on the top right, but it still has it in the old way, which is on the lower left. And it also does not have the new preset system because this is just the preset system of Cubase itself. So this plugin is now still running in the VST2 format, and that will no longer be available when Steinberg retires the VST2 format, of course. Now I also have a special affiliate link in the description to Plugin Boutique. If you now feel safe again to purchase any UAD plugins, if you do so via that link, you get all the Plugin Boutique advantages, which is that you're usually saving up loyalty points, virtual cash is what they call it, which you can use later to spend on new plugins. And they typically also give you a few goodies for free if you buy at their webshop. Now, if you're not yet too clear about the difference between VST2 and VST3, and why it is so important that you start switching to VST3 plugins only, then I have a separate video for you about just that. Check it out, enjoy, and see you soon.